Hello everybody, I am Dr. Sneha and welcome to the Perio Hub. So Perio Hub is a channel where we discuss periodontology related topics. So if you are interested, please click the subscribe button and tap the bell icon. And with that, let's dive into today's topic where we'll be discussing about dental plaque. So we very frequently also hear the term plaque as a biofilm. So let's discuss the two very important words here, the plaque and the biofilm. So first coming on to the term biofilm. Now how many of you have gone uh, scuba diving or deep sea diving? Now I personally have not and I'm waiting for this pandemic to get over before I do so. So during scuba diving we explore the underground wildlife as well as the rocks and the corals and if we observe these rocks closely they are covered with a slimy layer and this slimy layer is termed as a biofilm. So biofilm is a undefinable microbial community associated with a tooth surface or any other hard non-shedding material. Now the important terms right here are hard non-shedding material. So for example if we see the rock it is a hard substance and it is non-shedding. So it facilitates the formation of the biofilm on it. So on a day to day basis we can also observe biofilms on other hard substances like dental tube linings or oil refinery tanks as well as on the enamel which is a hard substance and it is non-shedding in nature. Now the second important aspect of biofilm is that it has to be undefinable microbial community. So this means that the biofilm is made up of large group of microorganisms which form colonies. But are these microorganisms similar in different biofilms? Definitely not. So they are undefinable. That means they are highly varied in nature. Now let's talk about dental plaque per se. So plaque is nothing but a biofilm which is formed onto the tooth surface. So it is a soft deposit that forms the biofilm adhering to the tooth surface or any other hard surface in the oral cavity including removal and fixed restorations. Again, the terms that we need to concentrate here is that it is formed on hard surfaces uh, such as the tooth and the restorative material. So you will not find a formation of plaque on the gingiva or on the buccal mucosa because these are soft in nature plus the epithelium of these tissues undergo regular shedding. So that shedding nature does not facilitate the attachment of the plaque onto the surfaces. Now one more important point is that plaque is a soft deposit and if plaque gets calcified or if it hardens then it eventually forms calculus which we'll be discussing in the later videos. Coming on to contributions, so it was Leon Williams in the year 1897 who described the nature of dental plaque and it was Verhoek who later on in the year 1950 gave the importance of dental plaque as the etiology of periodontal disease. So he was the first one to state that dental plaque contributes to gingivitis and periodontal destruction. But it was only low at all in 1965 through his experimental gingivitis model established a proof that it was the plaque which was contributing to the gingivitis in a experimental group of individuals. So we have spoken about this classical experiment in the previous video and I'll be linking that video somewhere on the screen. So now coming on to the composition of dental plaque, it is mainly composed of microorganisms. So remember we spoke about biofilms and how it is made up of uh, microbial colonies. So similarly, plaque is also made up of microorganisms which are then embedded in a intracellular matrix. So microorganisms along with intracellular matrix forms the dental plaque unit. So discussing about the intercellular matrix, it mainly consists of the component derived from the host like the components coming from the saliva or GCF and the components of the microbes such as the debris which are obtained from bacteria and other organisms. Apart from that, the intercellular matrix is made up of organic material like polysaccharides obtained from bacterial dextrins, proteins in the form of albumin uh, from GCF, glycoproteins from the saliva and lipids from the food debris and the host cells. Now apart from this bulk of organic matrix, we also have the inorganic components such as calcium, sodium, potassium and traces of fluorides which are also seen 
in this matrix. Now talking about the microorganism per se, the king of the microorganisms is the bacteria. So the majority of the plaque consists of various types of bacteria, the gram positive and the gram negative, aerobic, anaerobic, etc. But apart from bacteria, other organisms such as yeast, viruses, fungi and protozoal species are also seen. Now in a study done by Sokransky in the year 1953, now Sokransky is one such author who has immense contribution towards the microorganisms, their colonies, their subgroups. Uh, and we'll be discussing all this in detail in the next video. So for now, let's see the experiment which he conducted on plug, wherein he saw that one gram of plug consists of 2 into 10 raised to the power 11 bacterial species. So that is the huge bacterial load which is seen in one gram of plug. Now coming on to another term which is called as materia alba, which is again an accumulation or an aggregation of microorganisms and desquamated epithelium cells and blood cells which loosely adhere to the surface of the teeth, gingiva, plaque or dental appliances. Now the very important key difference between materia alba and plaque is the structure itself. Now plaque is a highly structurally organized component whereas materia alba lacks that structural integrity and that is the reason it is loosely adherent to the surface. So that means even if we splash water, it can be washed off. So you can wash off materia alba, whereas it's very difficult to disrupt a, a mature plaque sample. Another very important feature of plaque, it exhibits antimicrobial resistance, which materia alba does not. So let's take a quick example. So let's take this gated community where houses are built with cement and stone. So th this colony can resist any kind of climatic change. So heavy rains or a thunderstorm will not cause much damage to this particular community. Whereas on the other hand, if we see a slum area, where, so here com the community cannot resist any harsh environmental changes. So you can compare this with Materia Alba and this particular gated community is our mature plaque. Now after talking about the composition of dental plaque, let's put the classification under three main important subgroups. So firstly, based upon the location, we can divide plaque into supragingival plaque and subgingival plaque. So let's have a look at a diagrammatic picture. So in this particular uh, diagram, this is the gingival margin. Now the plaque which is formed above the gingival margin is termed as the supragingival plaque. The plaque which is associated with the gingival margin is termed as the marginal plaque. And the plaque found below the gingival margin is termed as subgingival plaque. So it is seen between the tooth and the gingival sulcus. The microorganisms which are present in the supragingival plaque obtains its nourishment from simple carbohydrates like glucose. Whereas the microorganisms in the subgingival plaque are slightly different and they obtain their nourishment through amino acids and certain peptides from the GCF. Now if we briefly talk about the sequence of plaque formation, it is the supragingival plaque which is formed first and this further causes gingival inflammation. So once uh, there is gingival inflammation, there is increase in the production of GCF and this increased GCF produces increased peptides which then causes increase in the subgingival plaque. Now secondly, plaque can also be classified based upon its attachment, attached plaque and the unattached plaque. Now attached plaque can further be classified into tooth associated and tissue associated or epithelium associated. So again, let's discuss this with the help of a diagram. So right here, we see the tooth associated plaque. It is attached to the root dentine, the cementum and certain portions of enamel. So here the microorganisms are usually gram positive cocci or rods or other filamentaceous microorganisms. And this tooth attached plaque eventually causes calculus formation or can cause root caries or root resorptions. Now coming on to the epithelium associated plaque or the tissue associated plaque. So here the microorganisms are usually gram negative in nature um, and um, there is a lot of presence of spirochetes as well. 
So this basically extends from the gingival margin to the junctional epithelium. Now the microorganisms which are attached to the epithelium can then migrate into the connective tissue and in advanced stages it can also cause destruction of bone. So it is quite evident that the epithelial associated plaque is the plaque which is responsible for periodontal destructions. Now talking about the third component which is the unattached plaque. Now unattached plaque is seen within the gingival sulcus. It is not attached either to the tooth on one end or to the epithelium on the other end. Now the third way in which we can classify a dental plaque is based upon health. So we have the health associated plaque and we have a category of disease associated plaque. So again let's look at a diagrammatic picture. So here uh, as we can see on the left side we have the health associated plaque and these grey areas are pathogenic bacteria and this white portions are the non-pathogenic bacteria or the normal commensurals which are seen in the oral cavity. So in case of health, the number of pathogenic bacteria is either less or the transmission of the pathogenic bacteria is less. Now under certain conditions, there is increase in the number of pathogenic bacteria or if the transmission is increased, then that type of plaque can cause diseases like gingivitis and periodontitis. So then it becomes the disease associated plaque. Now certain major ecological pressures such as low pH, sugar rich diet and low saliva causes this transition between the health and the disease. So these are the three ways that we can classify based upon location, attachment and based upon the status of health. So coming back to Lowe et al and his 1965 experimental model of gingivitis. Now based upon that model, the formation or the sequence of formation of dental plaque was given which we'll be discussing in the next video. So to quickly summarize what we just saw, we spoke about the three major components the biofilm, plaque and materia alba. Then we went ahead and saw the composition of dental plaque and ultimately we saw how plaque can be classified based upon different categories. So I hope this introductory video on plaque as a biofilm was interesting and if it was, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. I'll be back very soon with my next video where we'll be discussing about the formation of dental plaque. And until we meet next, take care of yourself. This is Perio Hub signing off.